All right. Soldier of Fortune, Community Edition. One man's venture in shooting foreign people. But in a good way, because it's for America, and that means it's po totally uh, morally justifiable. Yes. Um, as you can kind of tell, um, this is one of those kind of games where I enjoy, like, 90% of the game, and then there's that last 10%, which I don't necessarily dislike. Like, I don't hate the game for that last 10%. I'm just a little bit uncomfortable with that last 10%. And I'm going to explain that a little bit later. Um, but as like a Cliff's Notes kind of review, because I feel like I really should do like a, within the first two minutes, give my overall thoughts. This is a game I think anyone who's interested in first-person shooters should try out. It's a nice blend of tactical shooting with proper straight-up blood and gore and fucking blasting everything in sight. Um, it's competently put together. Obviously, it was made in the year 2000, so it isn't going to look fantastic. But the community edition and massive, massive fucking props to the community guys who actually ensure that people can still play this game because this is a game that's really worth playing, even if it's from a technical standpoint, even if it's just because you're interested in killing a couple of hours playing an entertaining first person shooter. So yeah, that would be my general my general take home would be this is a game very much worth playing, even if parts of it may not necessarily be quite your cup of tea, tonally speaking. So bit more detail on Soldier of Fortune. Um this is one of those kind of games where it's very much of the time it was made if that makes sense, uh, in the same way that Duke Nukem could get away with having strippers and having you just round up to shoot women out of hand in the original games, but when the remake came along, it was it, it just was fucking appalling. Um, and in the same way that Army of Two, when it very first came out, I'm, I, I played it with my brother, it was an amazing experience, but coming back to it, I realised, oh my god, I'm shooting suicide bombers uh, in the Middle East, and I'm doing all this fucking stuff, it's like, oh my god, this is... There are certain games where you can do that kind of stuff, and if you play it tongue-in-cheek enough, it makes sense, and you can kind of get behind it in this kind of... In post Postal, in fact, is the perfect example of doing appallingly horrible things, but because it's played so comedically, you know it isn't being serious about anything it's saying, it's just doing it for laughs. Something like Soldier of Fortune, which, you know, you go into the Middle East during the Saddam Hussein era, you are <laughs> shooting Russians and white supremacists, and it's played straight enough for it to be relatively engaging, but only on the tier that if you were ever at an airport and you were going through the WH Smiths and you saw a bunch of novels and you thought, oh, what's some shit I can read to pass the time on this flight? And you find a, like, a book where the gun descriptions are like three pages long and the main character has killed like fucking ten spets and has with a rope ladder. This is that kind of game. I, get, I call the game out on this shit all the time when I'm playing it because it really does smack of this kind of not overt fuck yeah America kind of sentiment, but just this fuck yeah John Mullins is gun Jesus kind of way, and I I don't hate the game for it. It's not enough to make me truly dislike the game, but it's just enough for me to be sit there, sitting there going, really? Really? Like, this game manages to have a final level where you are killing Nazis in a fucking German castle to prevent a nuclear launch. It goes full fucking Wolfenstein, and even then it's not quite dumb enough to mitigate the fact that this is a stupid situation. Even when you're fighting Sergei Degger, who's a fucking Nazi in Power Rangers armour, shooting at you with a microwave gun, because nothing up until that point has really been quite so daft, it still feels relatively sane. It's just like... Uh, it's very hard to kind of nail down why I don't hate it as much as I do, because I, you can kind of hear from the tone of my voice, I'm getting a bit worked up about it, because it's fucking dumb. It's dumb, but it's not clever or funny dumb. It's just dumb dumb. It is lack of intelligence dumb. <laughs> Oh dear! Oh, I really, I was trying. I was really hoping I was going to have a bit more of a structured review for this, but no, no, it's going all going to fucking pieces. If if you're, if you're wondering why this review is a little bit uncoordinated, it's because I'm trying desperately to stick to a schedule and actually get stuff out in order. Like my binary domain review still hasn't been fucking done. Still, I haven't fucking completed it. it. And I have actually found a way to finish the game and get it recorded. I just haven't. I just deleted my save, so I've got to play this. Fucking, I'm going to fucking get off point. Um, oh well, we'll fucking deal with that later. Um, but generally, um, oh, if I can derail my point, I'm trying to thwart it. So, but as you, as you can tell, I'm trying to get this review done, and it's not quite coming out totally um, coordinatedly. 
Is that a word? Fuck it, whatever. Because um, normally I would go like, what's the graphics like? What's the sounds like? What's the story like? And this is very much more just like my reaction to it and my feelings about the game quite shortly after I've played it. Uh, so <laughs> I'm still a bit worked up about it. Like, fuck, kill! No, uh, <laughs> although I did enough killing in the fucking game. Yeah, Soldier of Fortune is one of those games where, on a technical level, I can't really fault it, because at the time, it was really pushing the envelope. Like, the Ghoul engine, the whole way it actually did bodily defamation. Not quite to the same level as Soldier of Fortune 2, which I have played and I really enjoyed, because that did far more segmented deformity of the body. I mean, this is, like, younger me with an Xbox just going, <laughs> and trimming bits of someone's skull off with a 45. It didn't affect me developmentally. <coughs> That's all. <coughs> Kill everyone. What? Sorry. Uh, <laughs> so, I mean... While I had seen better, I still appreciated the fact that this was a game which really made combat feel visceral and a little bit horrifying. Like, the amount of times when people would be on the floor screaming from being shot and I'd feel compelled to just, like, fucking finish them off because otherwise I don't I don't like running away from someone who I've just fucking gut shot and I'm going to leave them to bleed out in a sewer somewhere. That's like, that's a bit much. Even if John Mullins is the kind of guy who really does flagrantly disregard human rights, at least I have a little bit of... Personal set, personal responsibility to execute pe wounded people? Okay, maybe this is not the smartest thing to be talking about. Oh well. But it it's a very competently put together first person shooter. It's something I would definitely recommend to people who are interested in first person shooters, because this is very much one of those kind of seminal 3D first person shooters. In the same way you'd recommend Doom or Castle Wolfenstein to someone who was into their isometric 2D, not isometric, what am I thinking about? The kind of faux 3D, 2D um, first person shooters. This, I think, is one of those kind of games in the same way you'd recommend Unreal or the same way you'd recommend. Oh, I mean, even other games like um, Max Payne for people who like third person shooters or anything like that. The same way you'd recommend the Final Fantasy series for people who like RPGs. Soldier of Fortune is one of those games which is tightly put together. Everything seems to work fairly well, it's got a decent amount of variety in it, so you don't feel like you're just picking the best gun in the game and cheesing everything through it, even though the belt-fed machine gun is kind of ludicrously overpowered and feels like you're fucking a hole in space and time with your gun dick whenever you pull the trigger. But, okay, maybe that was a bit of a strange simile. Anyway. <laughs> I haven't been drinking, this is the problem. I feel like I've been intoxicated by the game, just full of fucking violence and vitriol. Um, so... Yeah, I mean, it, this is one of those games where I feel like you... It, it's one of those games I would always recommend to someone. If they're going, yeah, I'm playing through some older first-person shooters, I mean, I'm just trying out different sort of things, I'd be like, mate, try Soldier of Fortune. Very fun, nice and meaty. Doesn't really challenge you too much. Isn't really too, like, pushing the envelope in terms of gameplay. But it's a very satisfying game to play. and has a lot of nice set pieces in it as well. In fact, that's something I should really give the game credit for as well, is... It does at least have a very nice sense of different things happening in every single level. There's very rarely, at least I didn't really notice, any kind of level where I'm just chewing my way down a corridor and there's nothing really much happening. Like you've got um, location defences, you're fighting tanks occasionally, you're fighting bosses occasionally, there's hostages, there's all this kind of stuff. Oh dear, excuse me. Um... And it just, it's always giving you something a little bit different, a little bit new to do. So the game never stagnates, which is always, I find, a good sign of design in any kind of game. Um, aside from that, honestly, there's not really much to talk about. Because, again, um, Soldier of Fortune is a very nice, self-contained little game. There's not a huge amount you can really talk about in terms of its plot or in terms of anything, like, esoteric. It's all very much... They came together to make a game about a man with stupid facial hair who shoots brown people. And they did it very fucking well. That was maybe a little bit too too simplified because he does shoot white people as well. But again, this is again that, that same thing of it was a game of the time. If you really have a go at it about these kind of certain things, I mean, what was it? I'm actually looking at the Wikipedia. Look at the Wikipedia. I'm looking at the Wikipedia. Uh, Wikipedia. Uh, Jesus Christ. I'm looking at the Wikipedia page here at the moment actually, and I'm just kind of seeing. I think they changed one of the locations, didn't they? Um, in fact, yeah, they were originally supposed to be much more realistic, the game, apparently, but um, they actually changed some of the things around, because obviously I think one of the conflicts was going on. Um, yeah, they were actually saying it was going to be based in Bosnia, and then they switched it to Kosovo, I think. Um, but anyway, like little things like that, where you can kind of tell the game was so of the time, it almost got a little bit too on the nose in places, which is kind of interesting. And yeah, this is a game where I would say... 
if you've got the time, if you've got the interest, definitely give it a go. If you're not necessarily too sold on the whole idea of that kind of tonal stuff, there are other games out there which are quite good, if not as good or better than Soldier of Fortune out there for you to play. But I find that this is just one of those... In the same way when you sit down and you pull open a really shitty novel and you read through it and you're enjoying it even though you know it's a bit shit, it's that kind of feeling. It is somewhat pulp without understanding that it's a pulp story. Very much. Um, yeah, I, actually, that would actually probably be the best summing up of um, Soldier of Fortune. It is a pulp novel that does not realise it is a pulp novel. And I am saying that, staring at a uh, <laughs> sorry, a book on my shelf I still need to read, which has got uh, elves with AK-47s driving Ferraris on it. Yeah, uh, that's the kind of self, uh, self-aware self pulp I'm more into. But anyway, um, that is pretty much my thoughts on Soldier of Fortune. Um, thank you very much for listening to me ramble, and um, we'll see you next time. Bye.